Hi, this is Summer with Summer's Tips and Stitches. And for this video, I thought I would talk about Premier Luna yarn. <clears throat> I think I asked you at the end of, not the last video, but the video before, what yarn you would like me to talk about. More people said this, and so I started a project right away with it. Um, so I'll first tell you about the stats and then I'll tell you how I feel working with it. Okay, so it's Premier Luna yarn, anti-pilling yarn. There's 237 yards per cute little ball. Um, and then it's 100% anti-pilling acrylic. Now I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what in acrylic makes it pill and I don't know what they do to it to make it not pill. And as of yet, I have crocheted nothing that has ever been worn or washed so much that it pilled. I've been crocheting actively probably for three to five years. Even though I learned to crochet much younger, I made a couple little double crochet blankets in college. I didn't really start really crocheting until I made my daughter that mermaid tail. And I want to say that was like three to five years ago, maybe four. So, I mean, I haven't had anything that pilled real bad, but if you have, apparently this won't. Okay, so um, when it came to the inside of it is a three light and it calls for a four millimeter needle and a four millimeter hook. Um, so when I chose the pattern that I was going to make with the, this yarn, I went into Ravelry because even though Fiberosity is going and starting, I'm going to be honest, I have not spent any time really figuring out how to work it other than creating my initial account. And I understand Ravelry a lot better. So I went into Ravelry and I went into type of yarn and I typed in Premier Luna and a whole bunch of projects that folks had made with this yarn came up. So I looked through those projects. I would say it tends to, it looked like almost everybody was crocheting. There was only two or three people that knitted a shawl. It was all shawls and then a few hats were made with this yarn. So I chose a shawl pattern and I was really excited because actually a while back when I did that crafter's choice, crochet crafter's choice challenge, I wanted to do the Secret Paths shawl, but you lovely subscriber friends wanted me to do a shell stitch shawl. So I went into my patterns and I found my Secret Paths shawl and I decided that's what I was going to make with my Luna yarn. Now the Luna color that I have is called Europa. That is the colorway, Europa. This whole focusing thing is just not my, it's just not my thing. Um, but it's beautiful shades of blue. So my favorite colors to wear. I got three balls of this from Madonna Ballard in a yarn swap and we swapped blue yarns. So for the Secret Path Shawl, I've started working on it already so I could talk about the yarn. Um, the one thing is it did not tell me a yarn, um, it didn't tell me what kind of yarn to use, it didn't tell me what size of yarn, what size to hook, or any of that. It just went right into, when you go to the Ravelry page and you type in Secret Paths, it then takes you to a separate website. Um, her blog or website or whatever. And then I scrolled down a bit and it said in US, English US terms. I clicked on that, it came up. I put it into a printer friendly version, it came up as a PDF. And so I had no um, notes in there about hook size or yarn size. Although I do remember from when I was doing that Crafter's Choice Challenge that um, all the yarn I had chosen for that challenge was worsted weight and a few folks had suggested that I do the craft the secret pass shawl with the DK weight. So here I am, I'm doing it with a DK weight. I decided to use, the, like I said, the yarn calls for a four hook 
And I decided because the last couple times I've done shawls, actually the last two or three, I did two, I did Paul Holly from the proper pineapple. I did two of her shawls. And then um, I did that one from Lion Brand with the Ombre Life Yarn. I went up a little bit size and a hook because lately I've been real I've been real tight with my crochet. Which is interesting, when I first started, I was really, really loose with my crochet and everything was really big. And now I'm really tight with my crochet and everything's small. So all that to say I bumped up to a Tulip 4.5. Um, I really love the feel of the yarn. It is super soft. I would even say it's softer than the Mandalas and their threes. That still has more kind of a wooly feel to this. And this actually feels very much like... Um, I love this cotton. It's a real soft, firm, um, here's my crochet so far, um, firm yarn. I really like it. I really like working with it. It isn't splitting. I'm, of course, using a tulip. Um, and the color changes uh, for this one are abrupt. It does not gradually change from one color to another. It's just you're crocheting along and bam. I wonder if I have one coming up to show you. It just changes to the next color. Ooh, I have quite a lot of this color section, but here I am, I'm unraveling it all just to show you. Okay. Come on, y'all. Oh, here you go. Right there, dark. And then right here, it changes from the dark to teal. Do you see that? Right there. Um, so if you don't mind color changes and weird spots, this yarn's going to be fine for you. If that bothers you, it's going to happen. Um, here it is, you know, right in the middle of a row, it's going to change like right down here. You see that it changed from dark to light. I've been pretty lucky with the locations. Here it is here. Get this back here. I was crocheting along in this light aqua and then right here on the end, bam, it turned to the navy blue. I've been pretty lucky right now with how it's going. It usually is changing in the middle. Right here, it was blue and then this side up came the aqua. So it hasn't been like right in the middle of a row. It's been at the point or a corner. So I decided to not lose it over this and I'm not gonna color control. I'm just gonna let it flow naturally. So there are abrupt color changes. It's not gradual like the mandala, how you'll have it fade gradually from a dark blue into a light blue. It just happens. The other thing that I really like about this yarn that a lot of other people don't always like, but I'm just telling you, is it has the flecking. Can you see that? How, um, here, maybe you can see really good right here. There are some dark blue flecks in with the aqua. Now I like that. I think having the darker color in with the light or the lighter colors in with the dark, I think it adds to continuity and connects the colors. So I don't mind the flecking, but some people don't like that. And I guess that's, you know, that's fine. You all, we all don't like the same thing, but I just wanted you to know that the two specific things about this variegated yarn is there are abrupt color changes and there is flecking from the dark colors into the light. I haven't really seen light into dark, but definitely there is um, dark pieces in the light. Okay, so the final thing that I was going to say about this yarn is at first I did think it might be a little tricky to get into this yarn, but it's actually quite simple. I thought maybe I'd have to come down and cake these. This is really just a ball of yarn. It's not in a skein, it's not in a hank, it's not in any kind of tricky way to get it out. I just merely um, took this tag out, popped the yarn into my yarn bowl, and it really, this is just really like what it looks like if you were to take your skein of Red Heart Super Saver and ball it up. Um, it looks so beautiful, balled up like that, how you see the different colors on it. Um, so it's very it's very simple to get into. There's none of this like, you know, the Pantones have you have to cut and unlink and blah, blah, blah. And it's not like a hank of yarn where you have to have someone either stand like this or you have to have a 
a spinning thing. I forgot what those spinny things are called. Mm. Swift. So yeah, it's very simple. You don't have to worry about a center pull or an outer pull. It's just right there on the outside. It's just a cutely wrapped ball of yarn. So far, I'm loving it. I'm loving the Premier Luna. Like I'm making the Secret Path shawl. It's working out really nice. And to be honest, it very much quite reminds me of Holly's Armor Shawl. I'm trying to remember if that's the one or if it's the one that I made with the other. I don't remember. But I'm loving it. So I'm going to use all three skeins in this shawl because dear Madonna gave me three of them. So folks, that's that's my thoughts and feelings on this yarn. Um, I will say though, I'm not very far into my first ball. Well, you can see for size comparison. So as of right now, I have not had any breaks in the yarn. I haven't had any knotting in the yarn. Um, I kind of have been feeling around in there because I was like, oh, do I want to review this without letting you know if there was any breaks or but then I thought about it, and I'm just going to be honest. I've had Karen Simply Soft. I mean, I've gone through a hundred of skeins of those. I've had some with zero knots or breaks in it. And then I've had some with one or two. And then I've had some skeins, like especially with the Karen Cake, where it felt like almost every color <laughs> in there had a knot. So I just think that, like, that's just something that happens because yarn is not endless. Unless you buy one of those big babies that I showed you from Stitches. <laughs> Um, you're going to occasionally have a skein of yarn that's going to have a break and a knot. Um, and that's just the way it is. And uh, as of yet, I've not had one. I, ha I haven't had anything like that yet. And um, if I do have one, I'm not going to cry about it. I'm just going to cut the, the knot out and just weave in my end. Um, this yarn is very continuous in its uh, texture. This is not a yarn that has blips in it or like really thicker pieces of fiber or thin fibers. It's, con it's a very continuous um, consistency. So you won't have any of those. Sometimes that really bothers me when I'm crocheting and then some of my yarn is a little thicker and then you crochet it for a while and then you get a real thin piece. None of that's going to happen. It's just it's straight through. Uh, DK3 and I do think it's appropriately a DK3. I don't feel like it's um, small um, There's no halo on it. It's a nice tightly wound strand of yarn Yeah, that's I mean, that's how I feel about it folks. I like it. I really like it. I can't wait to finish the secret path shawl I really can't I just think it will be very lovely so yeah, thanks for suggesting me do the premier Luna yarn. I'll make my shawl out of this and then I think the next time, you can't see it, it's up there in that corner, maybe I'll make a baby set with that other yarn I'd mentioned. Um, I'll do a baby hat, a baby sweater. And then, um, you know, I'll talk about that stuff next. So thanks for watching and subscribing. Thanks for liking and sharing my videos. And until then, happy crafting. Bye.